Good morning one and all myself Vani am Anand and I am here to talk about the corporate governance Corporate governance is a system of rules practice and process by which a company is directed and controlled and this corporate governance essentially involves the interest of company stakeholders such as shareholders and senior management executives and uh, suppliers customers financiers the government and the community so there are some basic principle that should be followed to maintain a proper corporate governance and some of them are the first one is fairness the board of executives or board of directors should treat their shareholders employees vendors and the community with fairly and also with equal consideration the second one is transparency the board should always provide timely accurate and clear information of such things as financial performance and the conflict of interest and the risk to shareholders etc the third one is the risk management the board and the management must determine the risk of all kind and how best to control them they must act on the recommendations to manage the risk and also they must give a clear informations to the relevant parties about the risk and the status of the risk and the fourth important one is the responsibility the board is responsible for its all oversights of corporate matters and also the management activities and it must act in the best of interest of the company and also its investors and now let me speak about the corporate governance models there are basically three types of models and the first one is the anglo american model this anglo american model can take various forms such as shareholders model stewardship model and also political model and however this shareholders model is the principal one and this model is basically designed f- so that the board of directors and the shareholders are in control the second one is the continental model two group represents the controlling authority under the continental model the first board is the supervisory board and the second board is the management board and these two boards remains completely separate and the size of the supervisory board is decided by the country's law and it cannot be changed by the shareholders and the third model is the japanese model the key players of this japanese models are the bankers and the affiliated entities the shareholders management and also the government and this small uh, independent individual shareholders have no right over the corporate governance in this japanese model now let me explain how to assess a corporate governance as an investor you should search for companies which practice a good corporate governance in hope to avoid losses and also other negative consequences such as bankruptcy there are certain points or categories or factors that we have to check while choosing a company which practice a good corporate governance and some of the points are it should be a um, disclosure practicing company and risk management their policies and procedures their audit and their relationship with the vendors and uh, social obligations etc are some of the points that we have to check through while choosing a, a company that practicing a good corporate governance as if now we have discussed what is corporate governance and the basic principle behind the corporate governance different models of corporate governance and also uh, how to assess the corporate governance and now let me uh, give an example of a company which practice a good corporate governance and let us take pepsico so it is common to hear about the examples of companies which follows a bad corporate governance uh, in fact this is why the reason the companies end up in uses and it is very rare to hear about a company that follows a good corporate governance and this is only because of the 
only because of their corporate guiding policies are perfect and that keeps them out of trouble and such a company which follows constantly follows a good corporate governance is pepsico in drafting its 2020 proxy statement the pepsico sought inputs from its investors in six areas and they are the first one is the broad composition diversity and refreshment plus leadership structure and the second one is long term strategy and corporate purpose and sustainability and the third one is the good corporate practice and ethical corporate culture and the fourth one is the human capital management the fifth one is the composition discussion and analysis and the last one is shareholders and stakeholders engagement this pepsico company maintains or follow a perfect organization structure in such a way that their chairperson and uh, ceo and the head for each department their employees everything everything they maintain in a perfect step by step or perfect structural model so that every customers can access them easily so till now we have discussed many things about this corporate governance even we have discussed it with an example and at the end have you ever thought is the what is the importance of this corporate governance or is there any importance in this corporate governance and of course this corporate governance is very important segment because it creates a set of rules and practice which determine which determine how the company how the company should operate and how it can align the interest of the shareholders and also the good corporate governance leads to a good ethical business manner or business practice and it leads to a financial valuability and of course it can attract the investors so at the end i believe that hope you all understand about this corporate governance and by telling this let me conclude thank you